Ed Ulrich Sugai was a Japanese American artist who was born in Tacoma, Washington, and he came to San Francisco. Uh, uh, was a student at San Francisco Art Institute. Hawaii. Hawaii. Honolulu. Born in Hawaii. Grew up in Tacoma. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, he graduated from San Francisco Art Institute in 1974. Um, and this work um, uh, that was done in the late 80s um, has, uh, was acquired by the Berkeley Art Museum only in December and it was um, in storage for the last 25 years um, since Ed died of AIDS in 1994. Ed, was diagnosed with AIDS in 1987, and he um, he did paint before. He was an accomplished artist. He was, in addition uh, to that, a gardener at the um, San Francisco Conservatory of Flowers. Uh, so he kind of had a parallel career at the time, and. Um, um, since he uh, was diagnosed with a first HIV and then AIDS, for the last seven years, we could look at his work and the way he understood his work also was a sort of visual chronicle of illness, mm. visual chronicle of AIDS, which manifested itself in a different series of works. Uh, it's kind of a second way of, of, of um, uh, fighting off this disease. He turned to his Japanese heritage and really um, um, started, you know, with, with two series of works. One of them was called Samurai Helmets, another one was called Ghosts and Demons, and this is from the series called Ghosts and Demons. Also, read um, something that he wrote about the series of Ghosts. The ghost is based on demons from Japanese mythology. Shoki, the demon queller, who is on the right, has a role in these paintings. Historically, he originates in Chinese mythology, and in my paintings, he maintains his Chinese scholar's cap. He embodies physical strength and endurance of thought. The ghosts on the left are symbols of weakness and negative power. Oiwa represents sadness and determination. Ghost represents spiritual survival and the battle between, sh between Shaki and the ghost is a metaphor for the will to survive. And uh, Jung Kui, um, or Shoki and all, um, was a um, sort of his mythological figure, but was supposed to have lived around the third or fourth century. And he came from the country, um, sort of um, uh, brilliant, but not very um, prepossessing. And, all, and he scored the highest or on the um, national the exams, exams. Right, on the period exams and everything. Um, but when the emperor saw him, he said, "That's frightful. That that this kind of person can, can't be in the in the imperial court or part of the imperial bureaucracy." Bureaucracy, and he um, negated or nullified um, his high score. So Zhong Kui um, is horrified, um, gets drunk, and then commits suicide by banging his head on the palace gates. Mm. Yeah. And uh, um, because he commits suicide, he can't be. Um, buried in an uh, appropriate family grave and everything. So the friend who accompanied him from his hometown um, did the honors uh, and all. Um, and then supposedly, this mythological, more mythological point is that he ends up in hell uh, and the king of the hell notices that he's a brilliant person and doesn't mind that he's terrifying to look at because he says, oh, this would be good. We can make you a king of the underworld and put you in charge of, of mall of, or, or, you know, of taking charge of all the demons. You, you'll keep them under control, you'll scare them with your face and, um, and, um, and, and beat them up with your brilliance and so forth. So he became this kind of demon queller. You know? And then